What's up, beautiful Bailcast listeners? Soon to be something else. I'm not sure just yet. I'm like raking in all your guys' uh, opinions and two cents on the matter because I really, really want it to be a good title. Um, but today's segment uh, and portion of the is brought to you by Cars. By NASCAR. <laughs> yeah. Where we ruin your podcast. <laughs> yeah. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> no, but uh, today's podcast, since it lands on a Friday, is going to be all about what you guys wanted a second opinion on, or you guys wanted to rave about, or you guys wanted um, for us to dissect a little bit. Although we're not pros in any of this stuff, it's just clearly two cents from two idiots um, who just so happen to be on this planet for more than 35 years. <laughs> Fine, I'm 36. Is that um, the name of the show? Two cents from two idiots? <laughs> oh, I like it. Martin Geo, two cents from two, two idiots. idiots. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I want to thank everyone that submitted. I did put this up two weeks ago. So if you haven't seen it and you're like, wait, what are they talking about? Don't worry about it. I put it up two weeks ago where I was like, hey, you know what? Do you guys need some two cents on something? Or is there something that's kind of stuck in your mind and you want to hear someone else's opinion on on things? Or is there something that you're celebrating and you just want to boast about it? Send it my way. I had you guys send it. I had it up for like maybe 30 minutes. And I got hundreds and hundreds of really good um second opinion inquiries about like things that people were raving about. I got so many quality, so much quality content, I guess, that I just didn't want to put it up again because I felt like I'm not doing those people justice. So again, if you're lost and you're like, wait, what are you guys talking about? Don't worry about it. I haven't re put it up. I will start putting it up again. Um, you guys will see it possibly on our website because it might, again, it might all be changing. So stay patient. But I, before we even start, I do want to say thank you for everyone who did submit. I do see um, um, how brave you guys were in doing that and like how vulnerable you guys were and in trusting us, the two idiots, to even look at any any part of your life and, and have a say in it. So thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, we don't take what you're submitting for granted. We're not going to make fun of it uh, for the sake of making you the butt of the joke ever. Again, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. We are just two idiots trying to trying to um, navigate life with you. So um, the reason for doing this is just we want to create a really cool, inclusive community of people who can hopefully learn from you. So that's another thank you that I want to say. Because of you, so many other people are going to learn from your, your situation. So... Without further ado, I want to bring it bring it in. Cool. Mm -hmm. You're just quiet over there, scratching yourself. Oh, I was just waiting for you to finish. Oh shit. Okay. So this is in no particular order. I'm just picking one at random. Okay, here we go. Remaining anonymous. Hey, hey. I have been trying to get a second opinion on this thing of mine from a few people, but since they know me, it usually ends up with. Whatever you want to do, I hope we'll be finishing. I I hope we'll be finishing my bachelor's degree here in Europe, and I don't really know how to continue. I don't feel ready to start working since I don't really know what I want to like do, or what I would like to do. But I want to get independent since I'm 23 already. It is not easy to get a well-paying job that would earn me enough to live on my own with school, and I can't concentrate well on both. But I don't want to waste time continuing with school either since it doesn't really spark joy and just stresses me out and makes me feel worthless if I don't perform well. I feel pressured to continue with school since in Europe it is paid by the state until we turn 26 and I would finish my master's degree by that time. I just feel confused and just don't really see how I can find out what to do with my life. Hope it is understandable. Love you. Yep. Um, so for me, there's always there's I already always, feel like we're gonna have way different opinions on this. Okay. So for me, I always feel like there's always multiple sides to one situation, right? So the way you're painting this, um, I'm like, wow, that sucks that you're that you feel bad about this stuff. But I don't feel bad because you're actually looking at things, not to shit on you in any sort of way. Shit on her. No, not or at him. all. Or him, right. Shit on them. Shit on them. I'm not trying to, it's because of the hey, hey, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, so I'm not trying to shit on anyone on this, okay? I just, I'm just putting it out there for all of us to see things just from a different perspective. So already how you paint your world to me is 
the most sad, most stressful. Like, of course, it feels like a fucked up place. I, anyone in their right mind, if you explain it the way you did, would be like, yeah, quit school. It doesn't spark joy. You feel worthless because you're part of this grading system and you're not. But that's just unfortunately not what life is, right? Like, you're always going to feel some sort of pressure. You're always going to feel some sort of stress. And you should never look at that and be like, fuck, this sucks. I need to run away from this feeling. If anything, you should always embrace it and be like, cool. Yes, it does suck. It is human to feel that it sucks. It is human to feel that pressure. You don't want it. But what happens after you overcome this stress and you overcome this pressure, you become a fucking more evolved person. But are so we looking for things to feel good? No, that's so boring. The only thing that should feel good is sex. So I should have more sex in European college? <laughs> yes, fucking absolutely yes. Fucking fuck as many people safely as possible. Um, so, but so I'm 23. I feel so old already. Should I be independent? <laughs> so the reason why I'm like you, you're you're looking at things glass half empty is because you're in the most advantageous point in your life and in your career right now, because being a student is, in fact, a fucking career. Your grades are equivalent to getting paid. If you don't perform well in school, your grades reflect it. If you don't perform well in a job, your pay reflects that. So it's the exact same thing. One is just grades and it's very cushiony. The other one is, no, there is no cushion. There is no safety net. It's like, it's like, okay, you're performing bad. Okay, well, you're either going to get fired or you're going to get reprimanded or they're going to cut your pay. Um, and now the consequences are, consequ consequ ah, consequences are worse because now you're not going to make rent. You're not going to be able to pay for your health insurance. You're not going to be able to pay off whatever debt you have. It's way crazier. So the reason why I'm saying you're in such an advantageous point right now is because you're literally in an establishment that offers you all fucking sorts of options. You but get I don't to, like any of them. <laughs> you get to go to Disneyland right now and go, ooh, I want to try uh, cooking. I hate cooking. Ooh, I want to try a language. I hate language. Ooh, I want to try computer programming. I hate Disneyland altogether. Ooh, I want to try building buildings. Can you shut up? <laughs> like you have a fucking smorgasbord of options right now. Like I get that you want to be independent. And again, I'm not trying to shit on you in any sort of way, but you're only 23 and you shouldn't see it's that so old. i feel so old and you shouldn't see that and compare yourself to other people at all right but i can't help it because they post these cool pictures <laughs> on instagram i want to compare you're in europe right now what the fuck <laughs> that's so fucking cool but some parts of europe are cool than others <laughs> and again we're not trying to shit on you at all like you're just but a I product feel shit in our geo i'm sorry you're just a product of your environment and you probably had a lot of love in your house and that's so fucking awesome that you had parents that fucking supported you and told you that you're the very fucking best but unfortunately when you come into this world no one gives a fuck about you and that's okay no one should give a fuck about you you know what i mean um and and you need to learn that not to say that this is a cruel cruel world and it's fucking doggy dog because it's not people are beautiful people are really sweet but they're dealing with their own demons they're dealing with their own obstacles they're dealing with their own shit in their head that you're not that important to them because they're like how am i going to make my stressful situation less stressful and you're here going oh man but like this sucks it's like that's fine and it should suck once it sucks then now it's now it's when the growing happens, it's like, are you going to sit there and pout and go, oh, man, this sucks? Or are you going to be like, OK, what actually sucks? What is it about my school that's stref stressful? What would spark joy? Like you need to shift your mindset and go like instead of going, this doesn't spark joy. It's more like, damn, I'm so grateful to have all these options right now. Now I can see what actually is going to spark joy. And if it doesn't spark joy, yeah, I mean, you got to keep re-evaluating things. What do you, well, are we going to difference in opinion here? No, it's pretty similar, actually. Oh, what the, what did you think I was going to say? I don't know. I thought you were going to be like extra supportive. I didn't know you are just going to straight diarrhea on their, on their ass. I was not diarrhea oh, at oh, all. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm being very supportive. I'm okay, saying that, fine. that they're viewing their situation in the wrong lens. Fine. That, that, I completely agree, but this is how I would say it. I'm, uh, oh, did I say it the wrong way? No, this is how I would say it. Oh, okay. Um, number one. 
your life for anybody is never gonna go a hundred percent the way you want it to. Cause wait, aren't there straight aren't there straight lines in fucking human nature? Only on your pussy. That's it. Hold on. So life a hundred percent will never go the way you want to. That's that's a given fact, no matter what. But my mom said so. No matter what. Number two. Hey, how come you could play like this and you're not playing back with me? I was playing back with you. No. Okay, fine. Or this shit's fucking because this person needs to hear some tough love, and uh, okay, let's th- go. That's why I need to deliver it to them okay. because uh, this is when tough love is going to help you. Okay, number one, your life is not going to go hundred percent the way you want to. Everyone has to understand that fact. Number two, because of that, you better fucking learn to love the situation you're in. Number three, what I learned in the military is a phrase that everyone in the military learns, which is called "embrace the suck." Which means when mortars are going off, you fucking shit your pants. There's fucking dirt flying in your face and bullets are flying at you. You embrace that shit and you go, yes, give me more. But wait, but I'm not going to have mortars going off in my life. Then jump off a building. No. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So, so what I'm saying is unless you're, you've developed another path, if you have your ejection seat ready to go, you better learn to love this burning plane that is going down. So right now, you are in school, you're 23, there's nothing that you're learning that's happy, it doesn't bring you any joy in life. You're in Europe. That, and that, you're in Europe, and that, if that to you sucks, no one can say, uh, no one can tell you how you feel about it. Only you can tell you how you feel about it. But the problem is, if you don't have your own out, guess what, you're stuck in that situation. So instead of being unhappy about it, it's up to you to do what Jill was saying, figure out how do I turn all these hates, all these dislikes into things that I like and how can I find joy in the things that are tough? In other words, how do I embrace the suck? And once you start to love the situation, you can bring yourself out of any bad situation and while you're embracing the suck, you're developing a second plan. This is what happens all the time in the military, any hardcore situation, when a helicopter is going down, the enemy already saw you and they're attacking your ass while you're embracing the suck and go, okay, cool, this this situation fucking sucks ass. What's our second plan? Let's quickly devise a second plan. Once we have an alternate route, 100% in that direction. So that's what you need to do. If you don't have 100% in a new direction and you haven't set that shit up yet, then you gotta love what you're in. Because you not saying what that you like it, you're just gonna go in a more depressed state, more depressed state, more, and you're just gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse. And if we were to pull back, I think you being in beautiful ass Europe, getting your school paid for until you're 26 is actually an awesome situation. If you're in the States, most people graduate college with like 60 to 100 grand in debt. And then if they go to graduate school, maybe 200, $300,000 in debt. So that's free money that your awesome ass fucking country is giving you. Take advantage of that and then learn how to love it. So those are my three things. Life is never going to go your way. Learn to embrace the suck and don't plan on anything that you haven't planned. So if you already have an out, go ahead and choose another option because you set yourself up good for you. But if you didn't, don't fantasize about how much better life would be if you're here, if you've never created that life. Right. And that's the thing. Because then you're always going to be happy if you're always looking outside of your life for happiness. Right. Yeah, you're always going to be unhappy. You're so organized with your thoughts. I was just going on a rant. Um, and another thing that you mentioned in... Uh, in your second opinion was um, that it's not easy to get a well-paying job that would earn me enough to live on my own without uh, and with school. Um, yeah. As soon as you leave school, you don't have any experience. So I think you're you're getting either misinformation or you have some sort of uh, delusion that once you get this degree, you're going to get a well-paying job. No, it doesn't happen like that. There's so much fucking co- competition. I don't know how it is in Europe, but there's so much competition, at least out here. Everywhere. It doesn't matter if you have a fucking master's. Like we own businesses. I don't give a fuck uh, what degree you got. If you cannot prove to me that you can be uh, uh, like you can do your job and fucking kill it, then I don't want you in my company. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you can have straight A's and you can tell me what a fucking GPA and all these extracurricular activities you did. And if I'm asking you for your resume or portfolio and you can't perform, I'm like, sorry, dude, you're cool on paper, but you suck at this job. And what you're bringing up 
it's something that everyone's going I through. I went through that. So Absolutely. Everyone, the situation that you're in, everyone goes through this three-way tango where this is where I'm at. And when I say I'm, I'm talking about me, you, everyone else that has been in this situation, which is the whole world. This is where I'm at. Where is my passion? And where is the market? Where is the market at? Because where the market is at is where the money is at. And so when you are blessed or when you are able to find the perfect place of all three, all three of them are on top of each other, where you have found your passion, which is exactly what the market needs. And now you're making money doing exactly what you love. And that's like the perfect trifecta of what everyone wants to do. Unfortunately, it's really hard to get all three to line up. So the people that are very business driven or money driven, Sometimes, yeah, like, you know, all of our immigrant parents, none of them are pursuing their passion, but they're looking at passion or working my fucking ass off in this restaurant and making money. People are going, I'm going to go where the market's at. So I push myself there, push myself there as hard as I can. And then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you have the starving artist, right? I don't really give a fuck about money. I, if I'm not fulfilled from the inside out, I don't even give a fuck. The dollar bill doesn't even look the same to me. And nothing That's against fair. nothing against them. That's fair. Because I have a, a bunch of starving artist friends that are fucking genius in their art. And they're, you know what? I've, I've, I need to do my passion. And every day I'm only going to have one meal, but that makes me really, really happy. That's cool. So they're there. But you also have to live with the reality of it that it is always going to be a three-way tango. And right now you saying, I need to find a high paying job. And I also want to be happy. You're asking for two things at the same time when you haven't even graduated or have experience, and that is an unrealistic ask. So in my opinion, what's really what I would do is take advantage of the free money that the country is giving me to get as educated, aka as prepared for the world as possible. And since it is free, pick what you want to do. Do I want to get a master's degree education on my passion? Is that going to make me extremely happy? Or do I want to get a master's, master's degree education on what the market needs? One or the other, right? Like, do I want to be, do I want to, if I'm passionate about cooking, do I want to get a master's degree in cooking? Or if everything's going to go AI, should I be a programmer and learn how to do apps and do AI, even though I have no uh, interest in that, figure that shit out. And then later on, slowly figure out a way to converge all of them. Yeah. I have something to add to that. Um, but first I want to introduce our sponsor. Okay. So our sponsor Buffy, whom I'm absolutely loving right now. And I know you're loving it. Yes. And, um, we recently got one of these Buffy comforters. It's called the breeze for Taika. Cause he's a hot person like Bart. And he loves it too. Yeah, he absolutely loves it. Uh, cause the breeze regulates temperature. Um, it's, uh, there's, so there's no more night sweats. You get cozy without overheating, which you and him always, always get. Yeah. It's a hundred percent plant-based. So it's designed with, uh, so it's designed with, um, uh, eucalyptus fiber. So it's, it's earth friendly. Um, and it's softer than cotton. And it's naturally soothes the skin. Yeah, it's actually really soft, but also like tough at the same time. Like it feels like those thick like hotel sheets. So like it's uh, I don't know how they made it, but it's really, really strong. I feel like you could wash it like a billion times. It's also cruelty free because there's no down in it, which I'm a big advocate of. Um, and it's hypoallergenic hypoallergenic oh awesome yeah so um i know you have a sensitive I get nose allergies yeah. yeah and what i was thinking that was happening to you before was because um uh you're using you were using cotton maybe there's like mold and mites and stuff that get trapped in there oh yeah but because they have high uh thread count it yeah. shuts a lot of that stuff uh, out and because it's made out of eucalyptus fi uh, fiber or fabric um it uses less water Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's super cool. And what I also love about it is that it's a little bit weighted. So I'm slightly claustrophobic. So anything with weight, I already feel like I can't breathe. But this one is so comfortable. It's like that perfect weight where it feels like something's hugging you softly. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like thinking of the pressure and I'm like, oh, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. But this one's really good. And I love it for Taika, especially for kids, moms out there listening. I love it for my two-year-old son because now he's sleeping in his own bed. And they tend to roll around and kick stuff off but because it's slightly weighted it's not falling off of him mm. yeah so i absolutely love it um i hope you guys will love it too i know you guys will love it so give it a try uh for 20 dollars off your buffy comforter visit buffy.co and enter 
uh, Bell, B-E-A-W. Again, you're going to get $20 off when you want to buy your first comforter at Buffy.co and enter code Bell, B-E-A-W. Thank you. And we're back. Um, so so it's easier said than done, right? Because you have to align the, the trifecta and it all has to work out. But it's, it's not even easy to, to say. It's not even easy to say. Absolutely. So imagine how hard it is going to be to do. Yeah. Um, and I know that the word for a lot of people, because I was one of those people, to hear a passion. You have to be passionate. Words to your passion. Pursue your passion. Passion, passion, passion. I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? You know, like I thought like a passion was like, I love to draw. A passion is I love to build cars. A passion is I love to train. I love to work out. Those for me were passions. But the older I became, I realized, no, a passion is actually something that you can do over and over and over again. That doesn't necessarily have to be viewed as something that can be a hobby. Um, For me, one of my passions is to help people. Like, I didn't realize that that was a passion of mine. I thought like, well, I'm not really good at art. I'm not really good at I don't know, money. I'm not good with business or I'm not good. So I'm like, damn, I have no passions. But for me, I'm like, fuck, I love, I get so, I, I like, I, I, I get this surge of energy when someone comes to me with something and they're like, hey, what, what do you think about this? And I'm so invested in them that I'm like, fuck, let me help you. Let me find who I might know. Let me see how I can connect you. Let me see how, dude, I'll go out. Let's have a meeting about this. Let's see what, I, like, I'm I'm like trying to tap into my resources, any of the ones that I have to be like, how can I help this person? Because like, that's one of my passions. Another one of my passions is I just want to be happy. And your passion doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be what I just listed. It's something like, fuck, I, I just want to be happy. Well, what's going to make me happy? Dogs make me happy. Cool. Let's talk about that. What about dogs? Um, owning one? Okay, cool. That's a step in one direction. Okay, well, what about owning one? What do you like about owning a dog? Oh, that like, you know, you always have a companion and that you like uh, specifically ones that you rescue or something. So now you kind of start building on this and you 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 create a job out of that passion. So the, the two out of the three now are kind of covered. You know, so it's not like so hard how you were making it sound, but um, there's just different ways to do it. And that's kind of going back to what you're saying. There is no straight line because you arrive to your conclusion in a different manner that I arrived to my conclusion. I didn't talk about no straight lines. Yeah, you did. You said the only straight line is my pussy. Well, because you brought up a straight line. Okay, fine. I brought that up. Fine. I think you just wanted to brag about your pussy. (laughs) You're so stupid. (laughs) But um, you made me lose my train of thought. I did? Yeah, what was I saying to make sure that you're listening to me? The line of your pussy was straight. No, before that. That you're saying that walking dogs. You suck. Um, so so yeah, don't uh going off of Bart's, you know, trifecta thing, like yeah, there's no one way to do things, but if you keep viewing the bad, you're only gonna see the bad. You know, like kind of like that exercise that we did when we were asked, okay. And you guys right now could do this at home, okay? So sit down, relax, or stand up, however the fuck, or if you're driving. Um, Right now, I want you to focus on everything that you see that is red, okay? I'll give you guys five seconds. One, so look at everything, count how many red items you see, right? One, two, three, four, five, perfect. Okay, you guys have that number in your head? Yeah. Okay, cool. Now, tell me all the things that are yellow right now. How many yellow things did you see? One. Well, right. But there's a lot more. There's one. There's two, three, four. There's so many other yellow things, right? I was paying attention to the red thing. That's why. Exactly. So if you're only looking for the bad, guess what you only see? Yeah. Right. So like, um, hopefully we were able to give you some insight. So yes, every time you're like, fuck, I'm stressed. Ask yourself, why? Why are you so stressed? What's going on? Write it down. I say this every single fucking podcast. Uh, write, write down why you feel so stressed. So for the one negative thing that you say, replace that shit with three positive things. That's why I love the phrase embrace the suck. Cause, um, you know, when, when shit hits the fan, it's really easy. Like you say, for people to focus on the shit, right? Look at all the red things, but then the things that people that are able to overcome, they see the camaraderie. They don't see that they're eating MREs all the time. They don't see the sand in the shoes. You don't shoes. remember it 10, 20, yeah. 30 years They remember years the, the memories. They remember the sense of achievement, of overcoming something that they thought was going to defeat them. Like all the things that are actually emotional and build your self-esteem and make you proud of who you are and what yeah. you've done. Those are the things that leave you. Yeah. So um, 
I'm a, I love that phrase. I learned it in the military. A lot of militaries use it. Embrace the suck. Yeah. Love what you hate. Like, I think it's a, it's not only a concept, but it's a learning and adapting mechanism that I think applies to all aspects of your life. And think about it. You are in a country that supports your education. That's like, you're in a really good spot. Just make sure you're looking at the right things. Right. Cause I know it's sometimes, you know, you got so much shit going on. It is hard. And especially if you, if you see other people and you compare your life to other people. Yeah. But, um, pull yourself back a little bit and take advantage of the situation. What's the best way to maximize what I have going on right now? Yeah. Yeah. And listen, like I get it. It's fucking hard. Like I've been in situations recently, as recently as last, the end of last year, where I couldn't even focus on anything positive. Like I tried so hard. I was going through so much shit that I would try so hard to focus on something positive. And it was hard. Like I get it, you know, like, like, that's that's the that's the sucky but the beautiful part about life, you know, and it's like it makes you feel alive that you go like on this roller coaster of ups and downs, you know, and every time you come up from a down, it just feels like again, like that growth and it feels so fulfilling and you feel like you've made this progress and you're just like happier and you're like, fuck, I'm like better than I was before that shit happened. Like, thank you. Um, so it's not an easy easy feat. And I think that also while you're going through this shit. Like, I think that's why it's so important to have at least one person that you can really trust that they have your back, um, that they'll tell you the truth no matter what. Like, we all need that one person, you know, where like we can come to them and say, we're going through this shit. What do you think? For some of us, it's our family. For others, it's just friends. Some others, it might just be a random stranger, you know, and I think even consulting a stranger sometimes that you have no ties to. They have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. That's why people love therapists, actually. Right. Because they get to talk about stuff from no. with someone else that's an unbiased point of view. Yeah. And they're not really giving you advice. They're just helping you discover more things about it. Yeah. And I think having that unbiased exploration really helps people. Yeah. So um, we love you and we've been where you're at. We don't mean to shit on you in any sort of way. We don't think that you're I don't you're think thinking- we shit on them. I hope you don't feel that because we absolutely love you. And I hope you can feel how much we love you because we're so like, oh, no, we've been there. Like, don't don't set yourself up for that. Um, I think I think you're off to the right, you know, on a on a good track. Um, I think you just need to shift your perspective a little bit and you're going to be fucking kicking ass. So for everyone else listening out there that's going through something like this, like I hope we were able to uh, shed some light. Okay, moving on to the next one. You might be good on this one. I'm not the best, but let's try. I'm, I'm the best at everything, so go okay. ahead. I'm literally the best at anything you can think about. Ready? I'm just kidding. I know, I ignored you. That's why I said, are you ready? I'm, I'm the best at being sad too. Okay, are you ready? To rumble. Can you guys please share tips on building habits and building self-discipline, specifically when it comes to productivity? I'm sure you both have a lot to say about this topic. I'm a first year uni student working towards my BSC. And I've recently come to a realization. I have a lot of loser tendencies. Growing up, my parents, <laughs> funny. hey, embrace it, man. We all do, man. We all got to do it. Growing this. up, my parents were always really strict about school. But right around high school, they started being more lenient. And that's when I no longer had discipline in my life. So I got through the past four years on autopilot. Thankfully, I was genetically blessed enough to get into a uni without ever putting any effort in. But I've realized if I don't start applying myself this this is as far as, as it goes. I've been, whoops, I moved it. I've been trying to add structure to my day by, by waking up early and going to the gym. But what are some tips you guys have in just building healthier and more productive habits? Like just to build the momentum and get used to applying yourself to your goals. Thank you guys. And I love your vids. Thank you. You don't think you're disciplined and you're, and you're productive? <sighs> I think I just read the first line. I'm like, oh, this one's good. And I didn't read the rest of it until now. Okay. Yeah. So. So no, you, so yeah, you are disciplined and productive. Yeah. Okay. What do you like to do? I just ranted the first one. I'll let you take this one away. Okay. Um, for me, the way that I like to do things, I'm a big fan of uh, doing what I did in school. So in American school system, 
um, growing up, there's like multiple periods. So you have like first period, second period, third period, fourth period, fifth period, sixth period. And for me, because I'm the type of person where if it's out of sight, out of mind, like literally right now when we're doing this podcast, I don't even know I have a son. I need things to be in front of my face in order for me to do them. So for me, so every time you tell me you're putting shit on this list, I know it's not going to get done. No, because I, I actually have a list checking period. Okay. Oh. So I actually go on my okay. list. That's how important this is for me. So for me, all the stuff that I have uh, going on in my life, I make sure that I touch upon it at least once a day. So that's why every single day, like uh, me, so me and Joe, my partner work completely differently. He does more of like an immersion technique where for him, it works better if he does like, let's say a week of intense this, like a week of intense karate, then a week of intense genius brain, a week of intense JK news. And then he repeats the cycle that way. Oh, cool. So he's more of like long-term for me. Um, I can't do that because, uh, I, I, I kind of like mismanage things if I do things that way. For me, I need to do a little bit every day. That's what works the best for me. So every single day usually starts off with fitness. Then it goes to either Barbell or JK. And then I have email answering time. And I end with family time. So within those times, I have periods. So every single day, my goal is in 24 hours, I want to accomplish being a complete human. So that means I have my fitness on point. I spend time with my family. I make money. I manage my businesses. And every if I could have a perfect day, then the goal is to just do that 365 days a year, then I'll have a perfect year. So every year I'll be better and better and better. So that's how I do it. And also I'm very intentional with that time. Uh, when I'm doing a, a meeting with Barbell, I'm not checking my phone on Instagram or doing something else. Or if I'm doing email period time, it's like very intense. I, I set, I will even set a timer. Okay, in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna try to answer 20 emails. And then you know, I'm in the zone. So I much rather go have shorter periods, much rather go, okay, I'm gonna have 10 minutes to answer emails and then 10 minutes to relax versus just 20 minutes and kind of up in the air because I realize I actually lose track of time and I'm not that productive. So when it's time for me to do something, I like really short things. Like, you know, the other day we're brainstorming barbell things. It's like 10 minutes, we're all gonna come up with three log lines, right? And then boom, we're just pow, 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 pow. It's not like, hey guys, meet back in an hour. And then some people go like, go upstairs and buy a chocolate bar. And like you waste like the first 20 minutes. So I like to be very intense, very intentional and set little goals that I'm trying to accomplish in that short amount of time. And that's how I achieve being productive. And then by me hitting all those periods and repeating that Monday through Friday is how I'm able to get more and more things done. Dope. Yeah, mine is kind of similar to yours. Um, so I've gone from different structures that like now I'm kind of creating my own, which is really cool. So yeah. I came from the school structure, similar to you. Once I had this, the school structure, then I had my job structure. Um, so then it was like, wake up early, go to work. And then at nighttime from like six to nine or 10, I was at the gym or doing some sort of physical activity. Yeah. And then, then I joined JK and then that's when we had a lot more structure because it's like we meet at this time we're shooting we had shoot like we had shoots we had meetings we had different types of things now we throw in barbell and now we're just like i'm cutting into the slices that i have to mm -hmm. um and i'm throwing those into my i'm slotting them in yeah and then i left all that and now i'm like a mom so i'm like fuck. there is no real schedule like there's only like the wake up feed nap wake up feed nighttime yeah for taika yeah um, and now I'm back where I do have a schedule, but it's not going to be so permanent. But what I've noticed for me that helps is when I set, um, not so short. Yo, you good? I got a piece of shrimp that came out of my mouth. Oh, oh, okay. So shrimp I, I shell. like, I like intentional short ones. So like you, I'm like, fuck, I'm so limited with my time. So how about for this next hour, I'm going to answer emails or, um, for this next hour, I'm going to work on this one task. But what I like to do is I like to set like monthly goals mm. and then I have like quarterly goals and then and quarter means three months. And then I'll have like, well, like, like, for example, with my fitness, right? I'm telling myself, I want to compete in this 
uh, in this meet. So now I have something to aim towards because if I was just working out, I can see myself just getting bored and going, mm. okay, I'll just put it off this week. I'll jump back on it next week because I have nothing to lose, right? That's when, also important. Once you set yourself to something, you have to be unwavering. Yeah, your goals are unwavering and you have to remember that. That's something that I'm really trying to work on too. Because, so much to the point. I'm sorry, go ahead. Thank you. Um, Damn. You're the guy that goes like this okay. to stop me. So I'm just surprised that you would you would cut me off. Um, yeah, that's something that I'm trying to learn to do is because I'm so, I think I'm so invested in other people that I love that it's quick for me to put my own shit aside. And it's not that I'm not disciplined or whatever. It's more that like, oh, fuck, you need my health? Help? Okay, cool. I'll just, I'll just take care of this another day. You know, and it's because I'm just not, I'm not, I'm, I'm being wishy-washy with my own goal and yeah. i need to stop doing that and that's something i'm really trying to learn on focusing and sticking to what were we gonna say what i was gonna say is whatever you stick to so plans don't work unless you stick to them so you have plans to don't work unless you do so our you, dreams so you have to stick to them no matter what to the point of almost quite not figuratively but like life or death so unless i have a fucking family emergency or i'm extremely sick I don't give a fuck if it's a friend that has, I haven't seen in 10 years is in town. If they're landing in on one of my periods, I'm not hanging out with them. So I've, if I, uh, so the only time, so I do a lot of times to hang out and be a normal human being, but that's Saturday and Sunday or after my, I get all my shit done. So that's how I am able to stay productive because or else what I've noticed is there are always going to be outside things that are gonna be so attractive and so distracting. Wow, Disneyland has this deal. Oh, did you see this? People are waiting in line for this taco truck. Ooh, my other, there's gonna be a one friend a month that you haven't seen in a long time, that needs help moving, that needs whatever. And then pretty soon all of your time becomes other people's time and you look at your life and you haven't built your life the way you wanted to build your life. Yeah. So if you're talking about productivity and you wanna build your life a certain way, to me, you have to be extremely committed to your goals and making sure you hit those things. Yeah, and then for you that wrote in, um, I wouldn't call yourself a loser. I think just you recognizing that you might have loser tendencies already tells me you're not a loser, A. Uh, B, you're already trying to make a change and I find that to be so fucking awesome. Like for you to be like, shit, I think I'm becoming a loser. All right, well, let me start waking up early. Let me, and even if you're not doing it consistently, I think the fact that you're going, let me wake up early, like you have it in you to want to change you have it in you to not be a loser so you're not a loser man yeah. or woman um i always say bro a lot too even yeah. if i'm talking to a guy girl um so you're not a loser uh and and yeah i think just writing it down you i mean right now we live in a fucking era where there's an app for fucking everything if you have an iphone there's like screen time you can set limits on how much your phone's gonna allow you or how much you're gonna allow yourself to be on certain platforms or certain games or whatever. Like if you're on Instagram too much, then tell yourself, hey, for one hour a day, I can be on it. After that, if, once you hit that, it like it blocks it out. So there's so many things to help you reach and achieve the discipline goal that you're trying to reach. Um, and then just having a calendar. Like I just bought our family calendar. It's I have it. I like yeah, it. I have it in the refrigerator. And like we get to see what we have to do the entire month and then every single day and then hour to hour. Like it sounds extreme, but trust me, it's not that daunting. But it's really cool because now Papa won't be like, hey, well, let's go to dinner on this day because he knows that I have something scheduled and he's going to support me and be like, well, I'm going to try to make mama do something if she already has, you know, Other plans. a goal yeah. that she's trying to achieve. Yeah. So even just seeing it in your face, you know, and you can start seeing like, wow, I'm not doing enough. Like, okay, I only went to the gym once this week. Wow, that's pretty bad. Let's let's make it two times a week, you know, and that's cool. Um, I recently went to a seminar where I saw Jesse Itzler speak and he says that he tries to do one life changing thing every single month. That's fucking sick. Yeah, so he tries to achieve one life changing goal every single month. And when I first heard that, I was like, damn, you extreme as fuck. But then when he said what the goals life -changing are- Life changing thing like- uh, Like a goal. Like a goal. Yeah, so uh, when I first heard it, I was like, wow, that's crazy as fuck. And then he says, well, it doesn't have to be that crazy. So for him, he's like, okay, well this month I wanna drink X amount of, uh, of water. And that's it. But that's life changing because now oh, you're okay. like more hydrated. I thought you meant life changing thing like getting circumcised. <laughs> I'm like, you can only do that once. 
Yeah. You can't do that like 12 times a year. That's the mind of a comedian, bro. <laughs> um, or like another one being like, oh, I want to I want to strengthen the bonds with my family. So I'm going to text three people every day for a month. And you, I mean, and you continue to do this because we all know it takes 30 days for something to become a habit, yeah, right? Yeah. Or for you to break a habit, uh, both, I, or I think. But yeah, if you're doing it for 30 days, now it just be becomes muscle memory and now you've already slotted it into your life. So it's easy for you to keep stacking on these life-changing things. That's one thing that I was going to say too is uh, productivity is built over time. Yes. So it's hard to be an uh, insane producer and become like P. Diddy or to become David Goggins or like someone that, or like, uh, I don't know, um, like Gary Vee overnight. It's really, really difficult because it they, they took them so many years to, like, be, to be that productive. Yeah. So for me, I go back to something I've talked about before where I believe in this thing called minimal effort theory, which is what is something that you can do no matter what, even if you have pneumonia, right? What is something that is so easy that you can do it, but when you do it, it does make yourself better. So like, let's say you want to read, don't go, I'm going to read an hour a day. That's, that's unrealistic. That's fucking hard. Start with 10 minutes. Oh, you said an hour a day? Yeah. Oh my God, I can't believe they said unrealistic. Or, I, heard, I thought I heard something else. Or, or start even with five minutes or even one page. What's something that I can do fucking playing basketball? I could just hold a, a book there, you know? Or maybe even that's, maybe that might even be too hard for you. How about you know that you play basketball? I'm just going to carry a book with me every time I play basketball. That I could won't be even, one of the life changing yeah, things I won't, for a month. I won't even open it. You know, so to me, what is the most minimal effort thing for everything that you want to do? So for your loser tendencies, what are those? What What is, and every single, maybe one of them is I don't do my laundry. Well, maybe it might be actually hard for you to do your laundry and wash and whatever. Let's just start with every time I do my laundry, I'm going to just fold one item. Next time I'll fold two items. Something that you can do no matter what and slowly build your way up. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this is, I feel like this was some pretty good advice, <laughs> but that's me just, uh, tuning my own horn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Playing jazz by myself. Yeah, I was like, damn, you're pretty good at jazz. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I hope we were able to shed some light on that. Uh, we got one final one. Uh, is this the two-parter? Okay. Oh, I think we kind of touched on this a little bit, so I guess it kind of helps. Okay, ready? Yep. I don't know if you'll get get to me and read this ta-da we did uh -huh, in um, your motherfucking face <laughs> but i had started a, but i had started a business a few years ago which my family didn't understand so they told me to get a job i got a job not a great paying job which three years later my business suffered and i'm super unhappy i recently hit rock bottom and in, and am in therapy trying to focus on myself i had to stop fitness for a little bit due to getting back a uh, sick back to back knocked me on my ass which now i'm doing all these financial investments back into myself uh -huh. Therapy, personal training, chiro chiropractic care due to injuries, and recently decided to take on take up a life coaching course. Meanwhile, I just want to leave my job, but I have the fear of financial instabilities. Do I just suck it up and give myself three to six months of day and night hard work on top of finding a part time job? I don't necessarily want the IG influencer title or fame, but I guess I want that life where you do what you love every day, your own boss, run your own business, and is just happy. I guess I'm at the point in my life of, am I the only person who doesn't have a dream job because I don't know what the fuck to do with my life? No one has a dream job. Trying to find my purpose. So um, what this sounds like to me is someone that was doing something that they actually really enjoyed, but uh, the family wasn't approving of it, so they did something with the family was approving of, but then now they're in a situation where what their passion was is kind of dwindling and then now they're in a, a state where they're like, seems kind of like the world's crumbling down. And for me, the beauty of planning is that it's free. And I think one thing that a lot of people don't do, but it's actually under everyone's nose, is actually planning your future. And when I say planning your future, I mean, actually planning it and not fantasizing. Cause I think that's what most people do. Most people go like this. When I graduate college, I'm gonna get this job and ooh, I'm gonna have to wear these dope suits. Then I'm gonna get married when I'm 25 and then buy this house when I'm 27. None of them is a recipe that you can get someone else to look over and go, that looks like a sound plan. What I'm talking about is this. 
So one, you need money right now. You, you need financial stability. And you're saying, should I just find a job to get financial stability? For me, 100% yes. Because if you're not financially stable. You got no legs. You have no legs and there's nowhere else to go. So for me, that's this is what I'm talking about planning to this point. What I would first do before you even start, people move, they, people move before they even think. I'm trying to encourage people to think and plan thoroughly before they move. And this is how businesses are built. So what I would do is, one, look up what's the average, like minimum wage or just job that you with your credentials can qualify for. That you, you, you know that you can get pretty easily, one out of five jobs will pay you this much. Map out the amount of hours you're gonna work. So like, let's say whatever that is times 40, you know that generally if you work a full week and it's pretty doable and with, with like 80% confidence, you can get this many hours. Now you know how much you're gonna, your gross revenue is gonna be. Now figure out ways to make your expenses as low as possible. So if, you're, if your apartment could be smaller, if you could just rent a room, do that. Maybe you're eating out too much. How can you uh, decrease. decrease that? How can you make food at home? What's the best way to decrease your expenses? Now you actually have, okay, you have your expenses that are low and then you have your revenue, right? Now you have that minus that and you know what your profit is minus all the other things that you have going on, like your phone bill, your car, whatever, you have your profit. With this profit, now think about what is the business that you want to get into? Because that's what you're trying to build back into, What does right? profit mean for people that don't know? It's, well, there's, uh, simply put, I don't want to get you, too crazy. How are you using profit? Just money that he has left over? Yes. Okay. So taking the, the, the what I was talking about was the revenue minus expenses. Okay. So now taking that, and figuring, now you know how much you're, you're gonna uh, make every single month. Now finding the business you wanna get into and now figuring out how much startup capital that you need. So one, do you need to buy goods and products? Are you providing a service? Do you need a space? What is all of that gonna cost? And then now with the money that you're gonna be making every month, figure out how many months it's gonna take to, for you to get to that point and you still don't even take the first step to apply for one of those jobs. Now you figure out how, you can look up a lot of stats online. What's the average time it takes for a job to get this many clients? Because then now you'll know in this hypothetical situation that you're creating, it's going to take three months before this job is going to get on its legs. So now- Job, you mean business? Business okay. is going to get on its legs. So now you know you have to, not only do you have to save up all the capital that you need, you need the capital plus the three months. And if you're really responsible, I'd probably do even six months. So now you'll know how much you'll have to be in this passionless job of yours, but you know it's for a greater good and you plan all of that out. So now you have math to back up every single one of your decisions and the beauty of this, and it's the same thing as people when they're on a diet and they track their macros. The beauty of this is it now turns into a game and every step that you make makes sense and it's not part of a fantasy it's part of you getting closer and closer to your goal and that is so fulfilling damn that was awesome yeah that was awesome and you do all of this and what's the beauty of this you do all of this scenario right and you haven't even applied for a single job yet now when you go apply and like let's say you're, you're just going to work at a gas station you won't go in there going fuck this is all i have to this is the only job i could find because now you know i'm working at this gas station because later i'm going to open up this oh, i'm working at this gas station for only six months bitch exactly you're gonna yeah. know you're gonna be so clear with your vision that you're gonna be i'm gonna come in and fucking kill this gas station job because i know exactly what i'm doing every single step for and it's all planned out and now you feel like you take your life into your own hands rather than life happening to you right right so i have two things to add to that the first one is none of this is gonna work out if you don't put your ego aside if you don't tell it like if you're a person that goes but i have a degree and i'm not saying the person that submitted this said that at all or i got that from you at all but just for example sake um if you have an ego about any of this shit then you probably aren't gonna work at that gas station you're gonna think you're above it or you're gonna be like well why should i cut out my expenses or damn i don't have to cut out my expenses or i don't have to look at my expenses like your ego is gonna fucking kill you if you don't fucking put that yeah. shit why aside. do i have to get rid of my bmw or or fuck i'm 36 right now and like all my friends are married with kids. It's like, I don't give a fuck about your friends and you shouldn't give a fuck about your friends in that regard yeah. either. That's their life. You don't know what the fuck is going on behind closed doors. They might be looking at you and going, fuck man, I'm so envious of so-and-so. They, they get all this freedom. They don't have to worry about a mortgage. They don't have to worry about fucking kids. Like, so comparing yourself, that shit needs to go with your ego. Um, the second thing is, 
there are people out there that over analysis is paralysis. So when Bart is saying to plan this, give yourself even a time frame for that. Just be like, for these next 30 days, I'm going to, or maybe for these next two weeks, I'm going to do this research plan. And by this day, I'm going to start attacking this I'm gonna plan. I'm going to make a move no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So no matter what. So so um, starting the plan and then setting a deadline for yourself. Because I know a lot of us will get trapped and going, well, it's not, it's not ready yet because we're scared. Yeah. Like, so I'm not ready to make a move yet or I'm not sure. Let me sit on this and me think about it. It's like, nah, fuck it. What do you got to lose? If you already feel like you've hit rock bottom and you have no purpose, then, then there's nowhere, there's no other direction to go. Yeah. I mean, you're only going to go back up. Yeah. So fuck it. Like you just got to do it. And that's been one of my life models. Like I've, this shit has got me this far going, fuck it. Let's try it. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's do it. Like that's always kind of been in my mind when I don't know. And I'm uncertain about things. I just say, fuck it. Let's do it. Like what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Um, so yeah, did we answer all of that? Um, um, and yeah, and you, and, and doing what Bart said and what I agree, you might not find your purpose right away, but that's why you want to do as many things and just do things so that you can find out what you don't like. So you might not find out what you like, but at least you can start saying, well, I didn't like that. Don't ever have to think about that again. Let's try something else. Oh, I don't like that. So it's okay to not like a lot of things because eventually you're going to find the thing that you like, which is going to lead to the thing that you love. What I'm talking about too is um, you might not find your passion, but at least you'll find a little bit of purpose. So the reason why I feel like a lot of people like the traditional jobs is because they can see the step by step. So either going to the wild, wild west, and I don't know what the hell it's gonna take for me to turn into this, but over here, I know if I go to four year undergrad, then I go to law school, I'll become a lawyer, it's step by step. So that's why a lot of people like being become doctors, accountants, engineers, whatever, because they see the exact step by step, my step, my 10 step to whatever, right? And that's why even why like the listicles and the articles are written that way. 10 steps to freedom, eight steps to this, seven steps to this. But the thing is, people don't realize you can actually make your own steps to anything. If you want to climb Mount Everest or you want to make the best uh, stuffed donuts, in your city, you can do everything. And, you, and the beauty part of it is that you can plan it all without even taking your first step. That, that's most people's biggest problem is that they, they jump right into it without planning. So what I like to do is, that's what I just talked about, that's just option one. Maybe make two, three, four scenarios. Uh, this one is this job that I found at the gas station. The other one, oh, there's this night shifting that pays a lot of money and uh, I only have to work half the hours. What does that look like? Oh, there's this other thing where my friend has his business and at first he told me that um, if I just put in all these free hours, he'll give me percentages. Wait, do I have savings right now? Maybe I can get started on my passion early. Figure out all the different options and map them all out. And don't let your ego or your emotions tell you what to do. Let the numbers tell you what to do. So that's, that's uh, what Ooh, I Ooh, like. this is getting me hype. Yeah. I like this. I like this advice so much. Um, so yeah, you guys, I think that's all the time we have for today. Um, and what I think might be called second opinion but i don't know i don't know i don't know yeah i don't know yeah what we're gonna call this we're, we're getting close guys we're getting warmer but yeah i hope that we were able to help our friends out there all of you guys um and i hope that you guys learned from each other because i as i'm like hearing you talk too i'm like oh shit that's so tight like i kind of did it that way without even knowing i did it that way yeah. so i'm even learning um thank you guys so much for submitting thank you guys so much for listening if you like what we're doing let us know leave us a comment also show us some love rate this podcast five stars and thank you to our sponsor buffy uh for twenty dollars off your buffy comforter visit buffy.co and enter bail b-e-a-w that's for twenty dollars off your Buffy comforter, visit Buffy.co and enter code B-E-A-W. And don't forget to check out me and Marber's brand, Barbell Brigade. We are now selling boxing gloves, pre-workout, fitness apparel, as well as we have a gym in LA. So make sure if you're ever in LA, go check that out. And our motto is dominate humbly, which means to always kill it whatever, at whatever you're at. But don't forget to bring up the entire community and be respectful with everyone because we want everyone to get stronger at the same time. Peace it out. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.